Well, it's good to have Dr. Steinhilber with us. Uh, he and Crystal have been here before, and we're certainly thankful uh, for the ministry. Uh, he's the executive vice president of Luther Rice College and Seminary. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to some of you, but for, I think, about 15 people here, many of us received our secondary degrees through that institution, and I think in IAGM, well over, I think it's believed between 50 and 70 people have received secondary education as a result of that institution. Uh, in the time frame that we're in right now, by the way, they pioneered online uh, and distance education uh, in a way that I think has really put them in a, a very strong position. If you're looking for uh, an institution, a college, and a seminary that can just give you some really good training and is, is well versed in, on online uh, classwork, this is, this is uh, they, they're just head and shoulders above. They've been doing it now for well over a couple of decades. So. Stephen, it's been a blessing having you and Crystal here, and it's really good to see you, and I look forward to hearing your portion. So, sir, you're this, up. Can, can you hear me? Am I, am I? All right, can everybody hear me? All right, sweet. All right. Well, first, I want to just thank everybody for the invitation to be with you here today. Um, Dr. Powell, Pastor Jim, everyone online and everyone there at uh, Living Grace Church, and Patrick Shivers, or is it Shivers? I don't remember how it is. But anyway, Patrick, if you're listening, I want you to know that it was great talking with you on the phone the other day. And uh, last but certainly not least, my wife, Crystal, she sends her love to everyone at Living Grace Church. And she told me to send a special shout out to all the ladies of the church who were so kind to her when we were there in Tacoma over two years ago. Um, it's certainly an honor to represent Luther Rice College and Seminary at this event. As many of you know, Luther Rice has had a long and special relationship with your ministry at the church and this conference. Now, this is my second time, and I hopefully it's not my last. Um, but concerning Luther Rice, listen, I would love to talk with anybody uh, who may be interested, or maybe you know somebody who's interested in pursuing a college or seminary degree from an amazing school like Luther Rice. And please don't hesitate to contact me. Contact Pastor Tom or Pastor Jim. Because there's many of you here today, there's pastors, there's folks in the congregation, uh, even some speakers uh, that are graduates of Luther Rice. And in fact, uh, Pastor Tom Powell, he's not only a graduate, but he's an active Luther Rice board member. And I want to thank him for his uh, commitment to the school. Because at Luther Rice, as uh, Pastor Tom just said, we offer um, some amazing degrees, bachelor, bachelor, graduate, doctoral degrees. And they're 100% online. So you can complete your degree in Tacoma with a school like us at Luther Rice. We're affordable. And most importantly, we're committed to the Bible. We're a conservative school that continues to teach that the Bible is the word of God, that it's inspired by God, that the Bible is without error. In fact, it's sufficient for our lives today. And listen, how can we have an annual conference without acknowledging the one and the only Dr. Ron Long. Dr. Long, he passed away and went to be with the Lord, you know, over about a year ago in May 2019. And we at Luther Rice, we just ask that you continue to pray for his precious wife, Lethea. Um, she's doing well. She's living in Georgia here at a, an assisted living facility. And I realized that Dr. Long, he leaves some big shoes to fill. And he was a very special part of your ministry there at the church and in Tacoma. But I'm certain if he were here today, he would, he would look to one of you in the congregation and he would say, son, go get me one of those almond roga candies. I'm fixing to preach. And I know he can't slap me right now, so I'm going to try to show a picture of him. Let's see if I can get that there. This was at our church. We put him in a cowboy hat. And man, he, he just had the greatest day that, you know, because he loves eating. So we ate and uh, it was just a wonderful day. And I, and I miss that guy. I certainly do. And I know you all do as well. And I'm just very thankful for Dr. Long and, and what he's meant to in my ministry. And, and I know in your ministry as well. Um, anyway, it's just he's just such an amazing man. 
But in talking with your pastor, Jim, this week, he shared with me the theme of today's conference. He said that it's God's faithfulness in changing times. And immediately a message I preached back in March to our church back at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic came to my mind. And I'd like to share a portion of that with you today. Because our God, he's been faithful. He is faithful. And he'll continue to be faithful in everything he says in our Bibles. We certainly can trust him today, especially during these crazy times we find ourselves in. Now, what I like about our God is that he expects us to be faithful as well, to be committed to the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in scripture, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And one way we can do that today is by guarding our minds. And that's what I'd like to share with you today, guarding our minds. It's a truth in scripture that I believe is extremely practical. And in fact, it's ex especially relevant to the times we're living in today. So I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever watched a scary movie? And then afterwards, that's all you can think about? Maybe that movie caused you to have nightmares or affected your emotions well after it was over. Have you found yourself saying, I just wish I would have never watched that movie. I just can't get it out of my mind. You may even find yourself remembering parts of that movie weeks later. There's no doubt that what we allow into our minds has a tremendous influence on our thought life. Let me ask you this. What is it that you think about when you're free to think about anything at all? Imagine when you're driving a, alone in your car or maybe lying in bed before you fall asleep. You see, over these last six months, many of us have had time, a lot of time, more time than usual, just to think. We've been working from home. Some of us have been self-quarantined, socially distanced. So what is it? What normally pops into your mind? What do you allow yourself to dwell on? You see, when we truthfully answer this question, it provides us a unique view into our heart and what we hold dear to in our lives. It reveals what motivates us. It reveals what drives our emotions. You may have heard the old saying that goes something like this. If you, if you were able to look at a person's checkbook and see what they spend their money on, you'll see what that person loves, what that person holds dear in their lives. It may be golf equipment, it may be clothing, it may be shoes, it may be hairdos, it may be church, it may be missions, you name it. But I challenge you today that it's the same with our thoughts. Look at my thought life and you'll see what I hold dear in my heart. Good, bad, even ugly. So are your thoughts today well-pleasing to the Lord? Do your thoughts reveal what you hold dear in your heart? Is there room for improvement? I know there is in my life. Because the interesting thing about our thoughts is that others can't see them. And we often can hide our thoughts from others. Except there's one you can't hide your thoughts from, and that's God. In fact, David in Psalm 139 is very clear about that. He says, oh, Lord, you've searched me and you've known me. You know, when I sit down and, and when I rise up. David said, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and, and you're acquainted with all my ways. Brothers and sisters in Christ, here's the reality. We're not fooling God. Instead, God desires that our thought life reflect his truths, and his truths can be found in Scripture. In fact, it's an unprotected mind, a mind that is not guarded, that will often lead us to sin. James chapter 1, uh, verses 14 through 15 say this. It says, but each person is tempted when he's lured and he's enticed by the devil? No, by his own evil desire. Then that desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. 
And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. You see, this progression of sin begins in the mind. And it proceeds into physical action. In fact, sin can originate and conceive in our thoughts without any physical action at all. And you all remember Jesus' example of adultery and murder in Matthew chapter 5. In verse 28, he says, I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And back up in verse 21, he says, You have heard it said that you shall not commit, um, commit murder, and whoever murders will be liable for judgment. But Jesus says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You see, these are sins that require no physical action. These sins are fully capable of being committed in our thoughts. It's what's going on in between our ears. So you say, Steve, what do we do? I don't want you to misunderstand me this afternoon. I'm not advocating some self-help strategy here. I'm not advocating some new age mind control, um, some type of seminar. I'm not even saying that, giving you some Star Wars Jedi mind trick. I'm no motivational speaker with a goal of convincing you that you can think positively and think yourself to a better life. That is not at all what I'm advocating. Instead, I want to advocate what the Bible says about our thought life. You see, I'm concerned that we don't take our thought life as seriously as we should. I'm convinced that our thought life could be hindering our fellowship with God. Because God, he is faithful, and we must be also. Friends, we absolutely have control of what we allow to enter into our minds. We absolutely have control over, over what we allow ourselves to dwell on when given the opportunity to do so. Listen, I'm going to come clean with y'all today. Here we go. I, Steve, get anxious and I get scared after watching a scary movie. There I said it. I'm a, I'm a 45-year-old man. <laughs> And I still have nightmares and think about scary movies days after watching them. Just like when I was seven years old. But let me ask you this. Do I, Steve, at 45 years old, have control over that situation? The answer is yes. I absolutely do. I can stop watching scary movies. Now, I understand that we cannot control everything that we see or hear throughout the day. Some things, they just involuntarily enter our minds and thoughts throughout the day. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we do have control over a significant portion of what we allow to enter our minds and our thoughts. From surfing the internet, to watching television, to watching movies, to looking at social media, we must practice self-discipline. These intentional sources, movies, TV, internet, social media, they influence us as a person. They saturate our minds and they saturate our thoughts. And ultimately, they influence our fellowship with God. And remember, our God is faithful and we must be also. I'm a big fan of A.W. Tozer. And he once wrote this, he said, we can be spirit-inspired thinking. We can't, I'm sorry. He said, we can buy spirit-inspired thinking, help to make our minds pure sanctuaries in which God will be pleased to dwell. He said, it takes spirit-inspired thinking to make our minds pure sanctuaries in which God will be pleased to dwell. To me, when I first read that, I go, man, that was that was pretty deep. And we need to ask ourselves as born-again believers, is our mind a place that God is pleased to dwell? Is our thinking spirit-inspired? Friends, the best way to manage our thought life is this. It's to offer our minds to God in complete surrender. 
The Apostle Paul refers to this in Romans 12. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. A renewal of our, a renewal of our minds is only possible by offering our minds to God in complete surrender. And by allowing the work of the Holy Spirit to conform our thoughts, Steve's thoughts, to those of God. That is spirit-inspired thinking. So how does this work? Well, first, we must take responsibility for our thoughts. And we must acknowledge that we need a renewal of our minds. As Paul states in Romans 12. Our thought life can change. And we need to recognize that. Second, the Bible says that we're to take action with regard to thought life. Paul once again speaks to this in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. He said, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. We were created to worship and obey our God, including our thoughts. And we must be intentional in our walk with Christ to ensure that our thoughts and the things that we dwell on on a daily basis are directed towards our Savior and that they're pleasing to him. If your thoughts today are not pleasing to him, I ask you to be intentional Confess that to God, taking them uh, captive to obey Christ, and ask God for help. Repent and allow God to do what he said he would do. He's faithful. Remember, that's the, that's the theme of this, of this conference. He's faithful to his truths in Scripture, and your mind can be renewed. And finally, the Bible tells us what our thought life must look like. What we should be thinking about. At this time of, of the year, I'm normally thinking about Cleveland Browns football and Ohio State football. And, but that's not what Paul says to think about. We go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. And Paul gives us a very clear and a very concise message. He says, finally, brothers, and I add sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, he says, if there is any excellence, if there's any worthy of praise, Paul says, think about these things. Let me ask you this today. Who do you know that can fulfill all of these things? True, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, worthy of praise. Right, there's only one, and he's God. So catch this, Paul, the author of this passage of scripture, is therefore reminding all of us, that our thought life must be centered on God and what is pleasing to him. Who knows, church? Maybe God has given us an opportunity here in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, these changing times, to hit the pause button in our life, to socially distance ourselves from the rat race that we often get caught up in, and to get our minds and our thought life straight. I challenge you to take this time and allow the Spirit of God to do what he so desires. To transform our minds. To conform your will to his will. Not our will, not his will to our will, but his will, our will to his will. Let us take advantage of this crazy season and fill our minds with the living word of God. 
by reading our Bibles and dedicated time to prayer. And take this time to do what Philippians 4 verse 8 says, instruct, instructs us to do, to think on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. And remember what Paul says, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I thank God for you, and I thank you again for this amazing opportunity to fellowship with you all. I ask that God will keep you strong and, and keep you healthy. And just know that Crystal and I love you. We love you as a church and love your ministry, and we look forward again to seeing you all in the future. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless. Thank you, Dr. Steinhilber. That was very Fresh. I, I just love the idea of the distancing that's the, the, the distancing that can happen because of this whole COVID thing, D social distancing, distance, distancing ourselves from the things that just don't matter. Uh, anyway, sir, we really appreciate that. Does anybody, we have a few minutes for some questions. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Steinhilber? If you're out there on, on, um, in your viewing, you can email questions or you can go to uh, Facebook, text questions. You can go to the LGM, LG Ministries um, website and uh, communicate uh, also through there. So if you have questions, Don's monitoring and we'll have somebody come up and read your questions. Dr. Steinhelber, why, maybe you can just quickly, if Pastor Fabian and Erica are on deck. There they are. Hello, how are you guys? Uh, but just uh, maybe just mention something about your ministry, Dr. Steinhilber, um, there at, I can't remember the name of the Baptist church, but can you just tell us what you do there? Yes. So I currently serve as an associate uh, pastor at Agadville Baptist Church. Uh, it's a small little Baptist church in, in right outside of Monticello, Georgia, a country church. Um, if the sun is shining, and everybody's healthy and no one's on vacation, we run probably about 40 <laughs> on any given Sunday. Um, but it's an amazing opportunity uh, to, to serve. We have amazing people hungry for the Word of God, and it's, it's just been a, it's a, been a great blessing to both Crystal and I uh, in our ministry. And I just thank God for my ministry here at Luther Rice as well. Dr. Flanagan, our, our, our awesome president, has, has given us the opportunity just to uh, – spread our wings and, and do what God has called us to do. So, um, and that's why I'm here today. That's why I get this awesome opportunity to spend time with y'all through that ministry at Luther Rice. That's awesome. Anybody, questions, comments? Um, like all our speakers today, Dr. Steinhilber's information is on the website and he, we have uh, Luther Rice LRU uh, links there and uh, you can communicate with him anytime. Dr. Steinhilber, uh, Pastor Powell's just saying, what can we, what can we just uh, put up there to pray first and foremost, uh, you know, for you and your wife in, in the ministry? It's a really good question. There's a lot of things to pray for. Um, I'm just going to be really candid with you. I, I am. There's just so much going on right now with the with unrest and. Uh, and in the in the pandemic and a lot of confusion and there's a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ that I've known for just such a long time that are affected by this and and I just I just ask that you just pray for um, us collectively as a school and our ministry that um, the Lord will bless it and he'll give us clarity and he will eliminate all confusion because I don't want the confusion of these times to uh, get in the way of the work that the Lord wants to do through Luther Rice, through Agadville Baptist Church, or, or your church there in Tacoma. Uh, it's, it's very easy for the, for the enemy to, to sneak in at, at times like this. And, and that's why I thought this message today would have been is a pertinent message about guarding our minds, because there's so many things that we can allow into our minds and cause us to go different ways. And 
And if we just guard our minds to the truths of scripture, um, as, as, as brother Lewis talked about, uh, earlier that, that that's where the truth is. So just pray that as brothers and sisters in Christ, that, um, there'll be no confusion and that, um, He'll just cover us right. in all ways. Okay. We have a good friend of yours right here. We're going to have Patrick pray right now. Awesome. What's up, Patrick? It's good to see you, man. Well, I just want to pray for Dr. Scott Holder and um, the um, Lutherites and the students at Lutherites. May you continue to bless them. In this time, um, may that you just continue to um, um, just uh, have your students just go out and proclaim your your name and your your kingdom, Lord. Because right now we we are. We are all in need of your presence, your love, and your sovereignty, Lord. And I just pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, sir. Thanks so much. And, and if you can rejoin us, you know, if you have to go, please uh, please consider rejoining at, a, I think, 620 your time, 320, yes. 3, 4, 5, 6. 620 your time we'd love to have you back and and uh to join us or you you know stay with us but